Welcome everybody to Volatility Trading Strategies. So back when I started my investing career, talk of shorting volatility was virtually unheard of. I could have asked 100 financial advisors, and maybe only a handful of them could have told me what it was about. Back then, there was no such thing as volatility ETFs. So those of us that were shorting volatility and harvesting that volatility risk premium, we were doing it through options and futures. That's how I started my career as a derivatives trader. Then 2009 comes around and a game-changing instrument hits the market, the VXX. In late 2010, the XIV and the ZIV were launched. In late 2011, SVXY and UVXY joined the party. So by the time I launched my business in January 2012, there was a whole suite of volatility ETFs on the market. But to be honest, it really wasn't until about mid-2016 that the short vol trade became mainstream. Now that it is, everybody and their dog seems to be talking about their short vol strategies. But the thing is, not all short vol strategies are created equal. Some of them have very good risk-reward profiles, and others don't. So there's no doubt that shorting volatility effectively can lead to a nice double-digit long-term return. Doing it wrong, though, taking on too much risk, that can easily lead to a blown-up trading account. So in this video, I'm going to go over four different ways to short volatility. Now, of course, there are others, but I think these are the four most common ones, and I will rank them from the worst to the best. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, smash that like button for me, it really does help with the YouTube rankings, and let's talk about the short vol trade. So let's start with the worst way to short volatility, the one that in my opinion, nobody should ever be doing under any circumstances, and that is shorting the volatility ETPs directly. So this would include shorting the VXX outright, and definitely without a doubt that includes shorting the 1.5 times leveraged UVXY and the 2 times leveraged TVIX. I made a whole video breaking down why I think traders should never be shorting the volatility ETFs. You can check that out here if you missed it, but it essentially comes down to the fact that when you're short, you have unlimited loss. When you're short something and the price keeps going up on you, not only can you lose 100% of your investment, but it can keep going well above that 100% and actually start costing you the rest of your portfolio. Shorting a low beta stock is probably okay, but shorting something that has the potential to go up 500% or more you could end up losing your entire portfolio and owing the bank money. Taking the UVXY as an example, using simulated prices through the last recession, in just a few weeks it could have spiked over 700%. Even a very small portfolio allocation to shorting this thing could easily have wiped out a trader's entire portfolio. And shorting TVIX, do we even have to say it? TVIX has the potential to spike 1500% or more under the right conditions. A repeat of the financial crisis, or if some kind of crazy flash crash happened, Anybody short these products is going to be toast. Now, of course, there are ways to use position sizing and rebalancing to make the position safer. And you can use options to hedge the position, also making it safer. But hedging isn't free. It's actually very expensive. There's a mountain of data out there showing that traders burn far more capital hedging their risky positions than they would just setting them up to be safer right from the start. Hedging is incredibly inefficient long term. So even if you do start with the riskiest position possible, which is shorting the ETFs directly, and then you use options, position sizing, and rebalancing to add several layers of risk management on top, all of those end up seriously cutting into your potential profit. In the end, when you get it to a point where it's safe enough to actually trade, you've turned it into the least efficient, least profitable way to short volatility. I mean, sure, it could end up making some money, but the point is there are many far better ways to go about it. So when you see traders talking about their core short position and then all the layers of risk management they add on top of it, it just shows a level of inexperience that should be a major red flag. In my opinion, just make it a hard rule. No shorting volatility ETPs, no exceptions, full stop. The second way to short volatility is buying the inverse volatility ETPs. Current examples are SVXY or the ZIV. These products are inverse, so when we see a volatility spike, the price of the product actually goes down. It doesn't involve shorting, it involves going long. So right off the bat, at least your losses are capped to whatever you invested. Now they aren't without risk, you can still lose all your money. Like I said, some crazy flash crash or something like that could wipe out all the value. Or we can just point to something that actually happened in the real world. The Volpocalypse event on February 5th, 2018. On that day, the VIX index spiked 115% and 
and it ended up terminating one of the inverse volatility ETPs, which was called XIV. Anybody who was holding XIV on that day lost over 90% of their money. So I'm not suggesting they're totally safe, far from it. But it is level two, definitely safer than outright shorting the other ETPs I mentioned. People who buy the inverse products, they start out with a maximum potential loss of 100%, and then through rebalancing, position sizing, and options hedging, they can take out some of that risk. But just like before, none of that is free and it does eat away into the potential profit. But of course, adding risk management to something that can lose 100% is far cheaper and easier than managing risk on something that can lose 500% or more. The third way to short volatility and one of the better risk reward profiles is trading either VXX or UVXY, but doing it through option spreads like long put verticals or short call verticals. Both of these option trades have capped maximum loss and capped maximum gain so you know right from the outset what you stand to make and lose. The risk management is essentially built right in, and very little if any additional hedging is required, which makes it more efficient than both of the other two methods I talked about. The key to this trade is proper position sizing and then finding an actual trading edge for the entries and exits. Now here's where I'll talk about another one of those major red flags. If you ever see traders talking about how they enter their vertical spreads based on price movement targets, like if it's up 10%, you take a trade. If it's up 25%, you add another layer. Anything resembling that, just ignore them. It shows a fundamental misunderstanding of just how far the prices can move in these products. That 10%, 25%, 50% nonsense is called martingaling. I'll do a full video in the future talking about why martingaling is a terrible long-term strategy, but I've already shown a glimpse of it in this video. When we're talking about a product that has potential to spike over 700%, or maybe more the next time around, you'd need to reserve capital for dozens of layers. And not equal amounts either, it has to be exponential. Which means one of two things are going to happen. Either during a very big unexpected spike, you run out of layers and you lose all your money in a cascading failure, or the other thing that happens, you do reserve enough capital to make it to the end of that big spike, but that means by very mathematical definition, those initial first, second, maybe third layers have nearly no capital in them. People who martingale based on price targets, they're always talking about how many easy wins they're getting. But all that means is, all of those easy wins have a very small amount of capital in them. Because of course you do need to reserve a dozen or more exponential layers of protection just in case. It's the type of strategy that looks like it's working for a while, getting a lot of very easy wins. And then it blows up. So just ignore anybody who talks about price targets. The options market is quite efficient. So to succeed at trading vertical spreads, it does require an edge, a comprehensive understanding of the volatility metrics that govern the price movements of the products themselves. Knowing when to enter and exit is the key to vertical spreads, not blind layering of price levels. That won't work in the long run. And the fourth method of shorting volatility, and the one that in my opinion easily wins out when it comes to the best risk reward profile, is using what's called stock replacement to simulate a short volatility position. Essentially, tactically buying long put options on either VXX or UVXY. I personally use VXX, but UVXY can be made to work as well. Now, I already have a full two-part tutorial breaking down the stock replacement method. If you're into shorting volatility, I highly recommend you give them a listen. And I will also be doing another full tutorial with even more examples soon, so stay tuned for that. But this stock replacement method is the best of both worlds. The potential profit is still really high because you are simulating a short volatility position. If you catch a period of calm in the markets, it can still make a nice profit. My last trade that I closed out last week, it made 19.7% in 6 weeks. But more importantly, because we're buying a put option, it means the maximum loss is capped and no additional risk management is necessary. You don't have to burn through your money trying to add layers of risk management. It's safer right from the start. The way I do it, I reserve the full amount of capital required to hold the underlying shares. And because options are cheaper than holding the shares, it means the maximum loss is typically capped at about 25%. And I mean if there's a flash crash of epic proportions and it blows up the market, using the stock replacement method, I can still only lose a maximum of 25%. I call this my tactical volatility strategy. And since that strategy for me only has a 20% portfolio allocation, that means if the short vol trade blows up completely, I can still only lose a maximum of 5% of my overall portfolio because of this trade. How is that not a great way to short volatility? Something that can earn much more than the maximum loss, and it requires no additional hedging to be safe. That's why it's my number one. 
Remember, when we're shorting volatility, we are the sellers of insurance, and we're just trying to add layers of risk management to protect against those times when the big storm hits. As rare as they are, they do sometimes come with devastating consequences. And a good rule of thumb when trading is, whatever has already happened in the past, expect it to get at least that bad going forward, if not worse, and be prepared for that. So all methods of shorting volatility have both inherent profit potential and inherent risk, so we're just trying to find the most efficient ways to do it. And the number one worst way possible, because it's both the riskiest and the least profitable, is shorting the VXX or the UVXY outright. Even if you add all the layers of risk management on top of it, just don't bother. It's very inefficient, a bad risk reward profile, and in my opinion, nobody should be doing this. Something that can work quite well if you have both a good timing system as well as good position sizing, is going long the inverse volatility ETPs like SVXY and ZIV. SVXY has been made safer because it is only a 0.5 times leverage factor these days. And the ZIV was always safer. ZIV dropped less than 20% in the February 5th, 2018 Volpocalypse event. So it's a fine choice as well. Number three is through long put verticals or short call verticals. This is a very efficient trade, but like I said, it does require an actual trading edge for entries and exits. None of that 10%, 25% threshold nonsense. But if you have a good grasp of the volatility metrics, verticals are a great way to short volatility. And lastly, the big dog, the best way to short volatility is stock replacement through options. It's a very advantageous risk reward profile. Like I said, my last trade made nearly 20%, with a maximum loss if the world blows up of only 25%. That's a trade I'll take every single time. So you'll never see me shorting VXX or UVXY outright, but my VTS community does use a nice balance of all three of the other methods I discussed. I like the SVXY, I love the ZIV, I trade verticals all the time, and stock replacement through options is a staple at VTS. So head on over to my website, claim your free trial, and let me show you some of these short volatility methods in action with some live trades. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.